1911s are cool, but sometimes I wish the 45 ACP just had like more power, and that's what I'm talking about. Is that, could it be 10 millimeter? Now we're talking. Ooh, let's talk about a 10 millimeter 1911 brought to you by T-Sauce. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms, here to talk about some 10 millimeter spiciness that we've got coming from T-Sauce today. What we have right here is their 10 millimeter 1911. Now this is pretty exciting to me because if you ever shot 10 mil, you'll know that it is a, uh, it's a powerful little cartridge. The FBI adopted it for a short period of time, but they found that it was, uh, it was just too much for them. The recoil was too high and not able to be managed as well. Uh, but for those of us out there that can really actually appreciate power, uh, you'll know that 10 millimeter is a very capable cartridge. We've done videos on 10 millimeter in the past uh, and we can definitely do maybe a little bit of a comparison. And today we're gonna do a very basic comparison between a 10 millimeter 1911, again, the T-Sauce, and we'll get into a little bit more uh, specifics on this gun in just a moment. And then my Colt Railgun, uh, 1911-45 ACP chambered 1911. Okay, cool. So obviously this design has been around for uh, let's see, 1911, 2011, 100 plus years, and it is timeless. I mean, when you think classy, when you think style, swag, this is what comes to my mind at least. The 1911 is a beautiful pistol, and it is one, again, that just has been working so well. It's actually still in limited use in today's military as well. The United States Marine Corps Op uh, Special Operations Command uh, utilizes the M45. If you wanna go see a funny video, go back to one of my very, very first videos that I did, and it was introducing an M45 1911 as a giveaway pistol. I don't... Look, we all have to start somewhere, all right? You grow up and you, you hopefully get better. Hopefully, some of y'all definitely don't think I've gotten better. Anyway, what we've got, like I said, coming from Turkey is this T-Sauce D10. Uh, first of all, it's beautiful. I love the two-tone forged slide and forged uh, grip and frame, sorry. And uh, it does have your forward slide serrations and rear serrations. It does have an ambidextrous safety as well, which is a nice feature. And the grips on it, these G10 grips, which I opted for on my 1911 as well, it didn't come with these. I decided to go with these G10 style grips also because they are super comfortable, rugged, reliable grips. And what I mean by that is you'll see some like plastic grips and things like that uh, that could actually break and deteriorate over a period of time. Uh, so having these G10 style just, they work so well. Now the controls on the 1911, they're pretty ergonomic. Uh, there's, they just work, right? So first of all, like I said, safety, very easy to manipulate. It is ambidextrous. So popping over to your left-hand side, still very easy to use. Back on the left-hand side of the gun, slide release, slide lock. Works just like so. Easy enough, right? And of course, 1911s are renowned for their triggers. I mean, right, here we go. A Little bit of take up, hammer drops. Barely any movement on that reset. Fantastic feel. Okay, cool. So like I said, already forged slide, forged frame. You also have the 25 LPI checkering, which my Colt didn't even come with. That's kind of funny. Uh, but you have this beautiful checkering right up front, which is gonna help also with grip. You get sweaty, especially shooting out in 90 degrees in humidity like we are right now in North Carolina. Sorry, we're in South Carolina technically. But here you are. It's nice to have that extra little bit of grip there that you don't have to worry about sliding around on. You know Katie gets her really sweaty hands and everything. I think she could actually probably appreciate this texture uh, right up front. and also on the rear on the flat mainspring housing and the back strap right back here. All right, and you'll notice on my Colt, I, again, don't have the checkering, mm, kind of makes me sad, and I also opted and I changed out the mainspring uh, housing back here and put on that G10 that matches all the way around. So, you know, it's a nice feel, looks good. What more could you ask for, all right? Also on this guy, you'll notice too that you've got a subtle undercut under here that allows you to get a little bit higher grip on this gun. One thing if you've ever shot 10 millimeter before is you will notice that it does have a little bit of recoil. In fact, let's go ahead and take these guns down range, let's shoot them a little bit, and let's go ahead and compare that some. All right, so just as our baseline here, let's start off with uh, the old school cool 45 ACT Colt 1911 here. And uh, Eli, if you're watching, you'll be happy to know that I can run a 1911 okay, all right, dude? I've got about one round left, and 
what can I say? This thing feels great, all right? So let's go ahead and watch that muzzle rise and see that little bit of recoil that you catch on this guy. All right, easy enough. Slide locks back as it should. Ship McCormick mag drops free. Now let's go ahead and compare that to the 10 mil T-Sauce that we have and see how that performs. All right, so what we'll be running today with the T-Sauce 10 mil is our jacketed hollow point s and B. I'm kind of glad that we're actually running the hollow points out here as you know, as sad as that's gonna make me, because you always wanna run your defensive ammunition through your everyday carry or whatever your defensive firearm might be just to make sure that it works well. And 1911s can sometimes be a little bit more picky when it comes to their ammo. And on some, what you'll notice, might not be the easiest thing for you to see, but depending on your barrel style, uh, this does take S Series 70 internals, just to let you know, but depending on your barrel style, the feed ramp and how it connects to the barrel could also cause a little bit of a hindrance or a problem uh, for feeding and reliability in that in that sense. Sometimes the feed ramp is actually integrated into the frame itself and sometimes like in this case the feed ramp is integrated on the barrel which typically I prefer. I've actually had less uh, I guess you could say feeding issues or reliability issues with when the feed ramp is attached to the barrel. When we go back uh, to the bench I'll disassemble the 1911 so you can see exactly what I'm talking about by that. But anyway let's see how it feeds these 180 grain SNB hollow points. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness, that feels really good. Let's go ahead and do this little number. That feels great. All right, so in comparison to 45, is it a little bit more snappy? Yes. I shoot quite a bit, granted, um, so maybe my opinion isn't as fair, uh, but I gotta tell you, going from my 45 ACP to this 10 mil, barely noticeable. I can notice it, it's still got a little bit of, like I said, snap to it, but with that 10 mil, I mean, we recently did a video where I talked about Glock and how they had the 10 mil, and that's known as the bear killer, right? Because it is a powerful cartridge. And now you're getting that in this classic design coming from T-Sauce, who has made all of the 1911A1, the US Army clones, and everything else that are beautiful and they work and run so well. And on top of that, you're also getting the adjustable target rear sights as well, both windage and elevation, which is something that I think is really, really nice. Overall look, fit, finish, very good. So let's go ahead and head back to the bench, take these guys apart, see what the similarities and differences are. All right, so let's start actually, let's start with the T-Sauce. Let's go ahead and just disassemble this guy and see what those internals are like. First of all, we are clear, great. And just gonna press that, make sure that doesn't fly away. Use my Colt over there to make sure I don't have any parts rolling away on me. All right. I gotta find the little half moon. And this is my first time disassembling this, so let's see if, uh, let's see how smooth this is gonna go. All right. Nice. And here is that barrel. There we go, still a little warm by the way. All right, so notice what I was talking about before, the feed ramp into the actual chamber, and that barrel is still a little hot, <laughs> is, is connected to the actual barrel. Stainless steel barrel, 10 millimeter marked, beautiful, like I said before, Series 70's internal, so all that should look familiar to most of us 1911 guys out there. Cool, now let's go ahead and take a look at the Colt. Make sure again, I don't have my parts rolling away on me, because that would be a bad day for me. All right. Again, clear. And with this, different types of guide rods and things and you know, springs and whatnot. So usually I take a little bit of a tool just to help me out on that, but not always necessary. And I'll try not to get them too confused. <laughs> All right, swing that guy back around, remove the bushing, find the half moon. Perfect. Got the extended guide rod on mine here. Okay. So notice how the feed ramp is actually integrated on the frame itself. 
and not on the barrel. So if you're ever shopping for 1911 barrels, keep an eye out for that because if you buy this barrel to fit into this type of frame, that's not gonna work out for you all that well. All right, so just things to consider and keep in mind. All right, so as far as parts go, that's the only difference that I'm seeing here in these types of guns. All right, we've got them back together now and I've gotta say, I've been pretty impressed with this pistol so far, shooting it a little bit more off and on camera uh, as you guys have seen. So far, excellent. And it's also just a really good looking gun. But how does that 10 millimeter cartridge compare to that 45 ACP that we all know and love? So 45, as we know, has been around for quite some time. Uh, I mean, John Moses Browning and Colt just obviously are fantastic icons of this platform and this cartridge. Uh, but when it comes down to it, 10 millimeter, ultimately a lighter round, uh, this one again being 180 grain compared to the 230 grain. 45 has been known for its power and its energy transfer on target. Uh, but you know, it's, it's old, which is fine. But the 10 mil, again, there's a reason why they refer to it as like the bear killer cartridge. It is traveling a lot faster and delivering a lot more energy on target. Uh, sure, there is a little bit more recoil behind it, but Mm, I would say that's a pretty good compromise if you're asking me. If you're looking for ultimate takedown, you're looking for power, lethality, and that energy transferred on target, the 10 mil seems like where it's at. Uh, so that's my thoughts on that. Granted, it's kind of like an AK chambered in 762 by 39. I'm always going to love that, right? But you throw a 545 in there or even 762 NATO, and I'm going to fall in love with that too. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What do you prefer, 10 mil versus 45 when it comes to your 1911 offerings? Uh, me, both. Get them, get them both, absolutely. But having not had as much experience with 10 mil, um, this is going to be something that I believe I'll be adding to my personal collection. I love 1911s, I really do. And if you do, I would recommend picking up this. Again, the TSOS D10. Feel free to check out all of TSOS's offerings at classicfirearms.com. Again, this one's coming with the forged slide and frame with the front and rear slide serrations, your windage and elevation adjustable rear target sights, ambidextrous safety, G10 grip, and of course, that checkering, the LPI checkering on both the rear and the front of the grip. And the subtle undercut that allows you to get a little bit higher grip on the 1911 as well. So excellent job by TSOS and the fact that it's coming in 10 mil, that much better. So again, comment section, let me know. 10 mil versus 45, what do you prefer? And head on over to classicfirearms.com to check out our latest giveaway. Because if you're unfamiliar with us, not only do we sell pretty much all of this that you can find on our website and the ammunition and the apparel and the range gear that you might need for your next range day trip, uh, but we also offer the one really necessary thing you need for your range trip, and that's a firearm at no cost to you. We give away guns all the time, and it could be a SCAR, it could be a SIG, could be a, like the MCX Rattler, which, you know, it could be. Uh, it could be a Barrett 50 Cal, maybe another AK, maybe another SMG 45, maybe another MP5. I don't know, let us know what you would like to see. Maybe a really fancy 1911. <laughs> Just let me know what you guys think. Uh, utilize the code word you see at the bottom of your screen right now to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. Classicfirearms.com, again, is where you can get those entries. And as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com. And tell me all about some 10 mil goodness.